take how many endless numbers of medications that may or may not work. I can't tell you how many patients I see in my clinic that take antidepressants and, well, it just it doesn't work, right? Well, do, what do we do? Well, we try another one, right? And so music is very similar to that, and we're learning just a lot about it, and I think the scientific community really holds us to high standards to what's get, what gets published and what doesn't get published. And, you know, we need to find this widespread use of, of uh, techniques that can help. We see it all the time in the clinic. We hear patients come in with their families and caregivers and say, man, this stuff is really helping to get engaged. I feel like I'm a part of my family member's life now. So I feel like this is really meaningful. Arlene has put together a phenomenal uh, a conference here and things like this uh, are, are really important to what we're doing uh, in individual lives. I'm actually a memory researcher. That's my, my primary uh, uh, method of study. Uh, and with Alzheimer's disease, and, and music has been sort of a late addition to my work, but understanding memory and Alzheimer's disease, and then, and then going into uh, how uh, music may help patients with Alzheimer's. But we really haven't understood what is it about the brain, what is it about music that helps us learn. This was sort of one of the first uh, PET studies done with music. Uh, you can see here on the left, this is just your brain at rest, and then this is when music playing. One of the key take home points to this slide, I think, is the whole brain activation, right? You see a lot of the brain that's engaged in, in listening to music. Music uh, therapy has a long history in the nursing home and dementia, uh, with dementia patients. It's, it was first really used, the crux of it was to, uh, to um, for behavioral symptoms, right? To modulate or decrease anxiety, agitation, and disinhibition, uh, and help improve apathy and depression. Um, then we started using music therapy to elicit long-term memories. Uh, this is really interesting. Uh, I worked in the nursing home in Boston for three or four years where we would do music therapy with patients for World War II. And it was really interesting to see a lot of these patients who were very depressed come to life um, they would dance with their spouse, they would get up and really move, and they would relive some of the past. Now, here's an area of caution, right, is that you need to work with your individual, work with your loved one within their context, because I will say there was an, a number, a small number, but that really, that brought up really bad memories from World War II, brought up elements of post-traumatic stress disorder. So we can improve memory uh, at, a, at a very basic level, but not for, for specific information. The question really is what brain regions are associated with music, uh, memory for music? Is it a whole brain process? Well, this question just started to get answered. I think this came out in March of this year uh, in Brain, which is a very reputable neurology journal. Um, this figure here in this region right here was the brain region that was most associated with learning new verbal information associated with music. You see, it's not here where we would expect, which is really cool based on the next study these guys did. You see our region of interest here. This is your music interest, your, your music uh, memory. If you look at anything in color here, this is the brain regions that are most atrophied, the cortical areas that are most shrunk with Alzheimer's pathology. And you can see here there's absolutely zero overlap with that musical memory uh, brain region. This is an FDG PET, so this is brain metabolism, how active your brain is. The color area shows areas of decreased metabolism compared to controls. Once again, there's no overlap or very little overlap with this brain region. Uh, and then this last one is, for those of you uh, semi-familiar with the, the latest uh, scientific techniques, there's actually a, li a, 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 a ligand binding. So they can inject a ligand into you, which actually binds to Alzheimer's pathology. Over the two studies, we do see that music benefits the formation and retrieval of new memories. Um, it's at a, definitely a, a greater extent for patients with Alzheimer's disease compared to controls, but this really benefits the idea or gist and not uh, for specific information. And so what we have uh, sort of worked with caregivers about is really it's a way to engage with your loved one that they seem and feel much more engaged and you're sharing, a, I think that was talked about on the panel, you're sharing an, an, an experience with that individual and it really does help them remember that they're maybe going to the doctor 
that day. And that's what's on the agenda. They may not remember which doctor or what time, but it really sort of helps them re-engage in their day, which I think is very important. We're, we're talking about quality of life here, which is the most important thing. Thank you.